You're watching the Luca Rosano Show. Here's your host, Luca Rosano. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Luca Rosano Show. I'm your host, Luca Rosano, and with me, I got a very special guest, Buster Shear, the founder of Hoops Nation and the host of the Buster Show. Gracious enough to give us his time today, Buster. How you doing, my man? Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. How's uh, how's quarantine life? I'm gonna just uh, you know get right into it. We're all bored right now. We we don't know when real life's gonna you know come back to uh, some normal uh, normalcy. But what have you been doing during uh, this quarantine? Honestly, not that much changes for me. I'm used to working in isolation. I'm used to doing most of the stuff I do alone. I just miss playing basketball and watching sports. Yeah. Those are just, those are just the main things that I miss. Um, and obviously, like, hanging out with friends. But there are ways to, like, stay connected in that way. But there are no ways to supplement playing and watching uh, fresh basketball. How tired are you of watching reruns? Because I'm getting pretty sick and tired of watching all these reruns. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> It's getting to the point where I'm watching games and with the commercials to feel something. <laughs> Literally, man. Like uh, again, we'll we'll touch uh, more on this later on in the show about getting your thoughts about the season if it'll come back. Um, I first want to start and talk about uh, your life as a diehard Knicks fan. Um, yes. So tell me, uh, how bad is it being a Knicks fan right now? How are you how are you coping with everything that's been going on with this organization? Oh, it's it's been a mess. It's been a mess, but it's been a mess forever. So it's not like it's not like any expectations were like shattered. They were always like the expectations were always met. It's just unfortunate that the bar is so low. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. So, like, obviously, I'm still hopeful every year that like somebody would take it upon themselves, like a Giannis or a Kevin or somebody. Uh, or the draft balls will fall because that that's not up to the Knicks, obviously. Yeah. Like, the fact that we didn't get Zion last year, like, it's not our fault. Yeah. We can't be blamed. For it. Um, and I have no problem with not getting it. It's just unfortunate. But as far as from a free agent standpoint, I just hope that one day somebody wants to take it upon themselves because if somebody's able to do it, they will be the biggest star ever. Like, yeah, the best ever. Yeah, it's so true, and um, I mean, we got our own mini rivalry. I mean, one of my uh, fondest moments or first moments as a Raptors fan, because I'm a diehard Raptors fan, was uh, actually when we finally beat the Knicks back in 2001 uh, in the first round uh, to uh, to get on to the second round. I remember watching that game, and finally, you know, Vince Carter had a had a big uh, had a big showing in the series, and we were finally able to defeat the Knicks. Because I mean, you guys were so good back in like the early. A part of the millennium and that's when I first started watching basketball so I have a question for you you kind of touched on it but aside you know from uh, the draft and all that stuff if you're if you're hired as the uh, as the Knicks GM what is your first move with the Knicks uh, going into next season oh to establish more control within uh, players that would come in I would make sure that every because it, it's really just an organizational thing. People don't want to come to the Knicks because they don't like the organization. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't like New York. It's not that they don't like Madison Square Garden. It's not that they don't like the players on the team. Although the players on the team are some of them are great. Whatever. Um, it's really just the, the organization. So I would make sure that whatever changes had to be made or made, um, you know, obviously that are possible, um, like. And then I think I would make sure that all the big players knew that, that they would have more freedom and control in the organization in similar ways to how, like, maybe a LeBron did in Cleveland or does in L.A. Um, so that somebody would feel comfortable enough to come. Because I think one of the problems is that there's no control. Yeah. And what happened, like, Charles Oakley can happen to anybody. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really good point because, I mean, it's been a while since the Knicks were able to land a big name via free agency. So, uh, you know, once players start to become comfortable again that they can view you, New York as a, as a good destination, then that's when I'll see that rise. But, I mean, you guys have a, an amazing young Canadian kid in R.J. Barrett. I actually had a chance to watch him play uh, uh, before making it to the NBA here in Canada. I mean... Uh, future is bright with him, and uh, I think the Knicks will eventually figure it out. But yeah, I think they they still need that you know that piece in the off season to go out and get. But what you worry about with like an RJ too is what happened with Kristaps, right? The Knicks drafted a superstar, 
and they traded him away for cookies. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't make much sense, man. I mean, what was your reaction to that? I guess you were just as shocked as every other Knicks fan. Like, what the hell are you doing? Bro, Chris Ops was my favorite, and they traded him away for nothing. Now, be honest. On draft night, were you one of those people who were like, who the hell is this guy? Why did the Knicks draft him? I, I wanted them to draft Justice Winslow. Yeah. yeah. At the time, who ended up going like 10 to Miami. Yeah. I had met, I actually met both Chris Ops and Justice the day or two days before at like uh at like a signing i like showed up i was like i was 15 at the time so i showed up i wanted to meet the guys and i told justice that i wanted him to come to the knicks um and i i said the same thing to christops just to be nice um but uh but yeah it happened i'm I was, and then very quickly I turned on it, but at the time I was just like, why do you draft Justice? Yeah, you had your heart set on Justice, like a lot of Knicks fans. Uh, Buster, I want to get your thoughts on my Toronto Raptors. Uh, it, I'm always curious to hear what other uh, you know, fans from other teams have to say. What were your thoughts on this Raptors season, this first Raptors season with old Kawhi up until uh, the suspension? I was impressed, bro. Siakam's a beast. Siakam just continues to take the next steps. Um... But I, I've been pretty impressed. I haven't watched as much, obviously, as I did last year but uh, of the Raptors. But um, I've been impressed. I've been impressed with everything that I've seen. Guys are really stepping up. Do you view them as a legitimate finals team, even with all the Kawhi? Because I think that was the notion coming in that a lot of people didn't even have this team making the playoffs, let alone be a, a second seed. Did you take them seriously as a team that could have gotten back without Kawhi? Before the season started, no. But now, sure. I mean, they've proven that. They've proven that there's a chance. And the Eastern Conference is one or two injuries away from yeah. anybody in the NBA Finals. So, or making it to the NBA Finals, at least. Yeah. That, in the West, you need, like, two injuries. Yeah, that's very true. If the NBA season doesn't get suspended, who's winning it all, in your opinion? Lakers. Who no question. Lakers? No question. So you didn't you didn't view the Clippers as a team that can maybe supersede them? The Lakers are winning. There is no way. Kawhi Leonard, bro. What do you mean? There's no way. <laughs> no way that LeBron and AD and that squad aren't getting it done. Do you, do you think so? Do you think so? Uh, I guess it wouldn't change your mind that if the NBA does come back with no fans, that's still your pick. It's tricky because there's so many uh, variables from taking two months off. Like I don't know who had a hoop, who practiced, who worked out, who didn't, who's going to be rusty, um, and that's going to be pretty important. But I know there's going to be like a little month long training camp beforehand. Yeah. Um, so let's just say everybody's. The same as they were before, roughly. Yeah, I'm still going Lakers. And what do you make of that? How do you see the rest of the season playing out? Do you think we will get a conclusion to the season in some sort of quarantine type setting, or, or do you think there's a strong possibility? I mean, looking at it now, uh, we're approaching May that we could get the NBA season canned as a whole. I really hope there's something because I don't want there to be. For better or worse, an asterisk on anybody's career. Yeah. I don't want there to be an asterisk on Kawhi's career. I don't want there to be one on LeBron's career. Nobody. Well, that's the thing I was thinking about, too. I mean, it's going to kind of suck. I mean, not obviously for the players because they're going to win the championship. But do you view, like, let's just say the Lakers go on to win it in front of no fans. Everybody's going to say, oh, this was an asterisk year. Does this championship really count for LeBron? Like, do you see that? Uh, type of chatter going on or do you think that doesn't matter at all uh i i don't think it matters too much i think it's really just uh it's just gonna come down to the guys the chemistry and so, that's gonna be it. so you're not taking anything away from any team that wins it this year no no everybody's in the same boat yeah, and I want to throw this question to you because I saw it actually being proposed, which was pretty cool, like a, a May Madness, March Madness type of bracket. Would that you would love cool. to see that? Um, yes and no. I would love to see them shorten everything. So I'd love to see the first two rounds being five. 
Um, I think they're probably going to have to do that regardless, yeah. just to end the season as quickly as possible. But then my question is, if this season happens or whatever is left of it, do they then start the next season in December and January? And then is that indefinitely the time of the NBA starting? Well, I was the draft always in August. Like it yeah. changes so much. But then NBA players can't play in the Olympics. Like yeah, it's tricky. It does change a lot, and uh, maybe you could touch on this as well. I remember reading something that the NBA did want to make some changes that actually had a later start time. So, you know, starting their season around Christmas, which wouldn't, you know, go head-to-head with the NFL when they start their season. So maybe this is a silver lining for them. Maybe this makes it easier for them to transition from here on out to start their season on Christmas. Um, Do you remember the season that started on Christmas a few years back? Yeah. After the lockout? Yeah. That was awesome. It was pretty cool having Christmas Day being the first game. Exactly. And I mean, from the NBA standpoint, you wouldn't be in direct, again, competition with the NFL. And and you can still have things finish in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, from a rating standpoint. But yeah, that's true. I think we all want sports back in some capacity. Um, yeah, like it'll be interesting to see how they play it out. Um, but I agree with you. I just want some sort of conclusion uh, to the season. I mean, whether it's like yeah. a whether it's like a bracket style thing so like even your Knicks have a chance to to win some games or maybe you just get right into the playoffs with the current standings hopefully we get some as as much as I'd love to see the Knicks in the playoffs I don't think that would be very pretty right now hey the Knicks could uh pull off some May uh May May magic you never know upset one of those top seeds (laughs) that would be awesome uh Buster let's talk about now you um on the business sense the social media sense I mean you're an impressive dude um, you know, checking you out, obviously all the interviews you've done, all of the high caliber interviews you've done with, with NBA players, personnel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let's talk about your, your brand hoops nation. I mean, over 900,000 followers closing in on a mill. Um, like take me back. How did that all start? Yeah. So it kind of started with me blogging about fantasy basketball on Facebook back in like 2014, um, and then I eventually took that and started covering all of the NBA on Facebook. And then, you know, time passing, I started doing like local radio broadcasting when I was in high school. And that made me kind of want to take it to another level from an original content standpoint. So, you know, going, doing live streams every single night on Facebook, getting a lot of big pages to share it. So kind of like cross promoting through that and helping them out in return. Um, and really blowing out these live streams to create personal connections with everybody who followed. Um, and then I decided to go one step bigger instead of just NBA and cover all levels of basketball. So that's how Hoops Nation came to be on uh, back on Facebook. And then I jumped over to Snapchat and then eventually Instagram uh, and now like primarily TikTok. But, um, but yeah, really just going from place to place and trying to expand in whatever ways I could while connecting with as many people as possible in the process so i mean obviously getting to almost a million followers is is no easy task how were you able to build your audience i mean you see everybody nowadays especially on you know instagram social media trying to build their brand to being the next big thing like how were you able to do it what was what was your strategy behind it strategy was just crazy level like so crazy levels of consistency at the end of the day it's like whatever your content is like there's nothing that insane. I think my content's good, sometimes great, but you know it's really just about the consistency. Um, I think it could be a lot better as well, so I'm always trying to improve that. Um, but like if I'm po- like I've posted pretty much 15 to 20 times a day wow. for four years. Wow. So there are like 30,000 posts on just Instagram. Facebook's like another 30,000 different posts. Snapchat, I'm sure, has been 50,000. TikTok is now in the thousands as well. So like those those numbers are pretty hard to beat. So it, it'd be kind of, you know, I think really that's most of it. That's insane. So I guess you're a firm believer um, of posting multiple times a day. Obviously, you know, guys like Gary Vee touch on that. You're telling me you would post so many times a day for four years. Um do you, so you, you attribute a lot of your success to that, the fact that, you know, you posted a lot per day. It was so like whenever I post, I pay attention to the feedback. So just yeah. constantly adjusting over those 30,000, you know, 40, 50,000 posts. So then essentially your, your, your brand building took about four years, you would say? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'd say it took longer than that, but 
because you have to account for like the other things that I was doing and like the other failures pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I'd say like six years, like total. Yeah. So out of those six years, what was your biggest challenge of growing and how did you overcome that essentially? Biggest challenge. Um, I guess I just expected everything to come really quickly. Um, and thankfully I just kept going, you know, when nobody was checking out my stuff. So that, that was biggest challenge for sure. And, uh, what would be a big piece of advice to anybody watching this who wants to create their brand or, or create a big following? I mean, like I'll tell you from personal experience, it's tough, man. I mean, even for myself, it, it's taking me two years just to hit like 10 K on, on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. and at times it can be very frustrating. Uh, you think to yourself, is this all worth it? Is it going to amount to anything? So what, what would you tell people who have a similar mindset of, uh, of, uh, of doubt, uh, during, during their time of trying to build something online? Yeah, you just got to keep you got to keep going. Um, you got to experiment with new platforms. I think utilizing whatever's hot. So like right now, one of the hottest things is TikTok. So yeah. putting some of your content into TikTok and then putting the links to whatever else you're trying to lead to in your bio and tie it all together somehow. I think just adapting to the current state of whatever is is really big um, because a lot of people will get stuck in like, you know, their print blog in the newspaper when they could be getting millions of views on TikTok. Very true. That's a really good point. Uh, and what, what's, your, what's your goal with all this, like from uh, your standpoint, as a brand, as as yourself, like where do you see yourself, let's say, in the, ne in the next five years? Where do you want to go? Yeah, so personally, I want to go into like much more uh, personal original content uh, on, on my personal end. So building out my personal brand, doing more speaking, um, doing more interviews, building out, you know, ideally a studio for myself. Um, once all this quarantine stuff is over and then, uh, on the hoops nation and just continuing to expand, um, and creating a really good team and infrastructure on myself. And that's actually one of the things I, I forgot to ask and I'll ask now, like everything you're doing now, hoops nation, do you have a team now that kind of helps you on that side? Or is it still all you, like, are you doing the majority of the posting and, 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 and marketing and all that? Right now, I'm doing 100% of the posting. Wow. I have people, I have a couple people who like submit stuff. Um, well, they'll send me stuff that they think is good, and then I'll go through those. Um, but yeah, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. Would you ever want to work for an ESPN one day, or do you want to strictly be on your own, self made 100%? Personal brand wise, like, would I, I would love. To like drop in and be like a Stephen A. one day a week. That would be so dope. That would be, that would be all time. But um, but yeah, no. Nah, I mean, I've never had direct interest, but you know, anything is possible, I guess. Who's somebody that you've you've looked up to in the space? Uh, like in terms of like, it doesn't have to be sports. It could just be somebody who's doing it on their own, killing the game right now, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Rogan, mm. Joe Rogan, 100%. Yeah. All independent, built out his own studio, has done almost every interview he's ever wanted to do, does one a day, live streams it, puts it out on every platform, beast. And the ratings are killer. I mean, he's easily the top podcaster nowadays. No, nobody it's, comes close to him. The guests he gets, the, the content. Yeah, it's, it's like 7 million listeners an episode. Even, it's like, it, he gets more people on his stuff than like the last dance gets and he does it every wow. day it's crazy too man because like i'm a youtube guy and yeah even his youtube like videos pop like a million views like it's nothing and these are like two hour almost two hour podcasts so, like the watch time on these things for that so wow and um going back to posting do you buy into like there's a right time to post uh, i gotta post at a certain hour or do you just post as it comes you don't control the algorithm. The algorithm controls you, so you just got to put it out there. Mm. That's very good. Well, guys, uh, I'm sure many of you already know of this uh, very successful young man. I'm going to put the link to Hoops Nation down below and the link to your podcast as well down below. Um, Buster, let's talk about the, the last dance now. Let's do it. Uh, episodes one and two were, were this past Sunday, Monday for us Canadians. Uh, that kind of pissed me off that we had to wait a, a day to see it on Netflix, but I have, I have watched it. Um, what was your reaction to episodes one and two? 
I loved it. Um, I, I didn't know as much about Jerry Krause. Obviously, it was after my, or it was before my time. Um, so I didn't, that was, a lot of that was new to me. Um, but I love that they're giving Scotty a lot of shine. I love yeah. that, you know, positive and negative. I just look like, love that he's getting attention because he never did before. Um, and I love that episode three is going to be all on Dennis Rodman. Like, I, I just think all of that's great. And Dennis's, uh, ESPN, um, documentary before came out four, five months ago. It yeah. was amazing as well. So I definitely recommend checking that out too. Um, but I mean, MJ's, MJ's the man. He has the most successful, most impressive career of all time. No question about it. I'm assuming he's your gold. No, LeBron's my greatest player of all time, but MJ had the greatest career of all time. Interesting. Yeah. I, you hear a lot more people say it like that, and you can make a case for that because like, you look at what LeBron's done and then what Jordan's done. That's a fair way of putting it if you don't want to necessarily compare the two head-to-head. Um, I agree with you with the whole like Kraus thing. I mean, uh, even myself, like it was very, very... like I don't remember that stuff too because I was very young at the time, and... Uh, a lot of that was very new to me. Like, wow, like there was this much turmoil for a dynasty entering their final year trying to three-peat again. Like, I think that caught a lot of people off guard, especially like the younger audience and, and the whole Pippen thing, man. I mean, he was he was one of the best players in the entire league at the time, and that was the type of money he was making. Like, that was crazy to see. Highest on the Bulls, like Luke Longley is getting like 2X. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, that was wild. I mean, what would be your, your biggest takeaway from the first two episodes? What stood out to you the most? Was it the beef? Was it the pip and stuff? Was it something else? Jerry Krause is not a good dude. <laughs> he is not a fan favorite. They made him out to be such a villain. And are you buying into it now where it's like the Space Jam character was modeled after Krause? Oh, 100%. Did you hear Jordan's Hall of Fame speech? The clip was going viral afterwards. Uh, Krauss is in like the third row at his, at his Hall of Fame speech and he points at him and he's like, so Jerry Krause is here. I don't know who invited him. I definitely <laughs> didn't. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. Cause that was another thing shocking to me. Now that you mention it, they were openly ripping and roasting on him. Like it was nothing like just making fun of his weight, his height, like just everything. I feel, I feel a little bit bad for his family. Yeah. Um, he's not around anymore, but I feel bad for his family. Yeah. That's yeah, that's the thing too, right? Because, I mean, he's not even here to defend his, his legacy or anything. And, I mean, yeah, the first two episodes, particularly that first one, really made him out to be a bad guy. Um, Buster, what are you looking forward to the most the rest of the way with this documentary? You mentioned Rodman being highlighted in episode three. Anything else you're curious to see uh, happening with this doc? I'm just excited to see all this, like, footage that we don't even know exists, like the locker room stuff, like, in the tunnels, like, all the stuff that you – never saw like i've seen the games i don't need to see the games again yeah that's true uh, i want to see the stuff that like was super private on the bus with audio like all that kind of stuff. practices do you think we're gonna get something out of the ordinary so for instance like jordan's flu game was he actually sick or was he you know hung over there's that conspiracy theory being thrown out there do you think we're gonna get a bang like that at some point I don't think Jordan would let that happen <laughs> since he's in charge of it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that MJ definitely did that will not be in the doc. So, you know, I don't think we're going to get anything like that. But maybe maybe like that on the flip side, like MJ actually played this game with like a broken it, like, you know, something that builds him up more. MJ wouldn't let anything bad be in there. Do you see a type of documentary like this being made about LeBron 20 years from now? I can see it being made next year. <laughs> wow. Um, and, yeah, like, that's that's the it thing. Like, about, it, it would have to be about the Cleveland title. Yeah. There's no question. It would yeah. just happen. Yeah. Yeah, and I, the thing about this dog, too, that I really like, I love how it all ties together, where, like, they focus on the last season, and then, like, they go back to Jordan's career, you know, his early days, trying to get past that Celtics team uh, when they brought in Pippen. So I love how it's just a, a storytelling masterpiece. And I'm, I'm very glad, as I'm sure everybody is, that they decided to run this now and not wait. Because, I mean, we're doing nothing anyway, so. <laughs> True. Super.
Um, but yeah, guys, we will have, or uh, The Last Dance, episodes three and four will be this Sunday uh, or Monday if you're here in Canada, like yours truly. Uh, Buster, this is a lot of fun. Before I let you go, uh, I got yeah. some rapid fire questions for you, my man. Let's do it. You ready to go? Let's go. All right. First question here. What's your favorite movie ever? Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to have to go to Google real quick. Jim Carrey. What's the movie where he's, uh, he's in like the little world. Um, the only Jim Carrey movie that comes to mind is the mask. And I, I'm sure it's not that. <laughs> oh, it's not that. I'm scrolling the Jim Carrey movies now. I have to get this one right. I love it. Um, I always blank on the name of this one. Why can't I find it? Mm. Is it is some of, is it a newer movie or older movie? Uh, Truman Show. Oh, yeah. That's a classic Five. one. There you go. I love it. Impromptu researching. This guy really is a whiz online. I love it. Uh, next question. What's on your cell phone playlist right now? Yeah, name me a couple go-to songs. I have like 2,000. I have a SoundCloud playlist of 2,500 songs. I just favorite everything, and then it goes in. There's a lot of Travis Scott on here, um, a lot of Drake, uh, DaBaby right now because he just dropped an album, um, Don Tolliver, uh, Post Malone, Billie Eilish is on here, Jack Harlow. Um, yeah, a lot of Drake. I see trophies on here at the top. Hey. Highest in the room. Uh, Goosebumps, Kanye West, All Your Fault. Um, yeah, those are a couple. You got a nice little variety there. I like it. And I can't see your phone. iPhone or I, uh, Android? iPhone. Team iPhone. I love it. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve? Um, about like myself or, or like other people? Like uh, what drives you nuts? Yeah, that, that other people do. Oh. Um, mm, call with no heads up. Mm. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a guy like I'm gonna pick up, so it's like, you know, <laughs> at least like let me let me like be ready or like I'll let you know when I'm ready. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, no calls at three a.m. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I'll be asleep. Maybe, I mean, probably not now. I'm awake at three a.m. But, um, but yeah. Describe yourself in three words. Um myself three words uh sports social media fun that's two words with commas in between i'll take that answer uh who's one dream guest you would love to have on your show obama Ooh, let's yeah, love the talk hoops with obama he was at game two by the way that oh was, yeah. yeah he was wow that was your chance <laughs> through. i've actually met him before really uh, that's yeah, awesome at the 2012 inauguration very briefly shook his hand um but but yeah that's somebody i'd love to talk hoops with i i to be honest he with you go ahead he knows his hoops yeah no and uh like you giving me that answer i wasn't expecting you to say obama that's like an off the board yet very intriguing answer because yeah obama does know his hoops that would be super dope uh last one for you here buster Start, bench, cut. Giannis, Kawhi, LeBron. Uh, start, LeBron. Bench, Kawhi, cut Giannis right now. Wow. So the younger of the youngest player of the three, you're cutting. Why? Right now, I think he could develop more. He hasn't won yet. That's a fair point. If wins, I can change. I can change my opinion. Well, it was a tough question. You handled it well as you did this entire segment. Buster, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day joining the show. Guys, go check him out. All the links to his work will be down below. And uh, Buster, uh, keep safe out there, man, and uh, keep doing your great work. And hopefully when this all ends, we can do this again sometime soon. Sounds good. Likewise, brother. Guys, thanks so much for watching the Luke Rosano Show. You can follow this show on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you all again in the next one. Have a great weekend, and peace out.